Bob's an artist, an artist molding a very pleasing physique. He reminds me of Steve Reeves, modern day Steve Reeves. What I'm trying to present when I'm working in an artistic realm is the beauty of the human form. And I try to get across more than just the two dimensional that's on the piece of, of paper. I'm trying to put a personality across. And I think that's one of my main strengths as a bodybuilder is that I, I can cross over to a general public market and appeal to not only the hardcore bodybuilding fan, which I am very much a hardcore bodybuilder, but also to, to the artistic fan and to the person walking down the street uh, won't be offended by, by my physique, but yet it can still, it still has the ability to be a Mr. Olympia. Obviously, I wouldn't be going through all this if I didn't expect that I was going to uh, win a competition, but I also train with a, with a picture in my mind of the perfect physique as it, re as it relates to me. And so when, I, when I'm training, I'm picturing that perfect physique and trying to attain that. Um, if that happens to coincide with what the judges want, then that's fantastic. Um, but when, the bottom, when it comes down to the bottom line, I guess uh, in coming back to bodybuilding now and, and training again, my bottom line is to win the Mr. Olympia. I mean, that's the, the big draw that, that brings me back to it. Any of the guys who placed in the top ten could very well win it someday. I mean, Bob Paris is no exception. Bob Paris would make a great Mr. Olympia. Uh, he'd be a great spokesman and a great representative. Uh, although, uh, his time has not come yet. And I think that's one of the reasons he's back. Bob Paris announced retirement, and he's back. I think the reason is he's back is because he wasn't allowed, or he didn't allow himself to, to really tap his full potential. I was um, interested in pursuing some other activities and kind of burned out, uh, kind of frustrated, feeling like I, I wasn't really advancing and had a real need to refresh myself in some way. Not in, not in a bodybuilding sense, but inside myself. I need to, to grow some more. I just really appreciate the great support that all the fans have really shown. In the couple of years I was away from the sport, uh, a tremendous amount of support and curiosity as to what I was doing. I hope to be able to give back a little bit of pleasure to those people who really give and lend support to, to my career. Just a block away from Gold's Gym is this towering cathedral, the New World Gym. Designed by Joe Gold, the same man who brought you the original Gold's Gym, Here's where Arnold Schwarzenegger, seven-time Mr. Olympia, built his biceps. He continues to train here today. Victor Richards is probably the most awesome creature to walk the face of Venice in Santa Monica. To see him having lunch is a, a sight to be seen. When he, when he grabs the fork and attempts to cut his steak, it's like his triceps ripping. It's what every bodybuilder dreams of looking like. I would say to win contests, he would need to have more polish, need to have more finesse. In fact, need to have experience walking on stage and posing. It's a different thing. There's, there's a gym body and there's a stage body. Some bodybuilders look absolutely godlike in the gym and then get on stage and all of a sudden they just don't look as good. How long have you been bodybuilding, Victor? I've been training for five to six years. You're known as Mr. Big to the whole world. Why isn't Victor Richards going into the Olympia? Uh, because I believe before you could be able to compete with other people, you've got to be able to compete with yourself first. And I believe just like to learn more about other people, you gotta know who you are. I think too many people are so busy competing with other people instead of putting the time to learn who they are and competing with themselves first. I'm trying to perfect myself first before I can compete. I'm not doing this for approval. You have to understand, before I started training, I didn't know anything about bodybuilding. This is just what I was doing for happiness, and I don't want to take the happiness away because I don't know what it's like to take a day off. If I take a day off, I'm miserable. It's just like taking baby. Uh, it's like taking a baby bottle away from the baby if I don't train. For me, this is a meditation. 
this is a ritual between my mind and my body, you know? So, Who would you like to see win the Mr. Olympia? The best man. I think the best man should win. Whoever comes in and should that night should win it. Thank you, Mr. Dan. Okay, take care. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay. Just one, and the hand off the top. Okay, is the camera? One, two, three. Yes. One, two, three. Yes. The head will be up. One, two, three. Yes. That's good. Well, the full term is androgenic anabolic steroid. Androgenic means male hormone-like. Anabolic means to build, and steroid is a class of drugs that these are. These are derivatives of cholesterol. Your body has male hormones in it, derivatives of testosterone. And these drugs are manufactured synthetically, and we use them in medicine for people who have certain types of anemias or different types of diseases. The athletes, unfortunately, use these hormone drugs in order to enhance their growth of muscle, their ability to retain weight, nitrogen, and all these different elements that they retain. I have to be quite truthful with you. I only use anabolic. I'm not going to have to deny it because uh, all, all the other Miss Olympia contender, I feel that they are using it, and I only use it for the, the fact to reverse catabolic effect, you know? I don't use steroids to be a monster because I don't think monsters win. There's no way of stopping anyone from doing any action that they wish to do. It's just like a diabetic who likes to sneak chocolate cake. They shouldn't eat the chocolate cake, but they're going to do it anyway, but you'll still take care of them to try and manage their diabetes. What I try and do is pick up the health problems in the athletes early enough before it becomes a fatal or a chronic serious injury. I'm in the gym, and I've been in the gym for 12 years, and I've seen young kids or people that don't even look like anything, you know, they start taking steroids, and they're taking dosages that, you know, a champion bodybuilder would never even take, and they still don't look like anything. So if you feel that steroids are going to make you a champion, they're not. It's sad to say that it's gotten out of proportion now. You know, it was something before that it was almost like a, a clique that only bodybuilders knew about. And now everybody knows about steroids, and now steroids are becoming almost like cocaine. It's coming that bad. You see, the guys that make it to the Mr. Olympia are already genetic superior beings to begin with. That's why they've made it this far. The people who get hurt the worst are the young kids coming up who aren't so genetically superior because they're going to take five times as much as these guys to try and get anywhere near where these guys are and that's the patient population that would be most severely damaged overall. I said it before and I say it again. If you eliminate, eliminate anabolic steroids from all the athletes at one time, the champion will remain the champion. You know, and I really think um, we better off without them, honestly. There's one athlete, uh, Paul Jean Gillian, who is just in a recent pro contest, and he's in the top 10 or 15 in the world. And after a recent competition, he wanted to be tested. He came to me, I didn't go to him. And I tested him the next day, right after the competition, and he was negative. He also won the world championships where he was tested. So there are these genetic freaks, so to speak, or these superior genetic specimens that will gradually come to surface. I put a bet that I take a drug test any time. If I flunk it, I give anybody $10,000. I give them $100,000 if they want to. It's just I won't flunk the test because I never take drugs. People keep saying, well, you come off of it. I didn't come off no drug for the universe. I have never taken drugs. I competed a meal away for since 1980. I think the main thing about natural bodybuilding is you have to train all the time. You can't take two or three months off and then try to come back. You have to eat good all the time. And it's become like a self-discipline. You got to really want it. I'm not looking to risk my health for, you know, glory. You know, I, the body is supposed to be an athlete sport. It's supposed to be very healthy, low, low blood pressure, not high blood pressure. The guy have high blood pressure. They're losing their hair. You know, they look, oh, I'm 28. I'll be 28 September 17, and I don't look 28. I got guys that my age look older. And, you know, I, to me, I appreciate what I do. The drugs do work. Um, that was a mistake the medical community made in that they said that the drugs do not enhance performance. The athletes knew they enhanced performance, so now when we tell them, well, the drugs will also hurt you, they say, well, you lied to us about this part. Why should we believe you about this part now? Uh, the drugs do make a difference, whether it's 2% or 5% or whatever. There is a definitive advantage. However, they don't get to keep the advantage. For instance, an athlete takes these, he might shoot up quick, but it'll come down quick also, where an athlete that trains naturally will come up slower, 
go even beyond where the other athlete and then stay at this high level for a longer period of time mm -hmm. and begin a gradual decline. These athletes will burn out much earlier. When the bodybuilders of yesteryear did take steroids, they didn't take them in the massive dosages that the bodybuilders today are taking. You know, steroids are just a finishing touch for the bodybuilder. And the thing is, more is not better. So that's the, that's the thing on steroids. It's not the steroids that make a champion, but it's the hard training, the dedication, the dieting, the sacrifice, and the genetics that that person has what makes that champion. Drugs is ungefähr so viel. Here, that's, that's so what viel. drugs is. Uh -huh. And that's Arbeit. Hard Arbeit. Schwere, harte Arbeit. Hard work. Very hard work. And this is only drugs. If you asked me four years ago, I didn't think we'd ever get a handle on this program, and now we have a very firm handle on it. I think we're going to continue to increase the number of drug-tested competitions, and if we can get bodybuilding to become an Olympic sport, it'll open up all new avenues for the sport financially as well as socially, and I think we'll eventually get our drug testing up to the top levels. But it's going to take a lot of work, a lot of time, and a lot of money, and we'll see if the sport supports that. Hi everybody, my name is Lee Marshall, and I'll bet a lot of you recognize my voice if you don't recognize my face. That's because for 25 years I was a sportscaster, eight years of those with KABC and the ABC Radio Network. It allowed me the opportunity to retire from radio and television and really do what I want to do, which is to be right here at the mecca of bodybuilding and getting involved in what I think is the most exciting of all sports, and that is health, fitness, bodybuilding, getting strong, just creating a wonderful environment for people to be involved. Everybody wants a Gold's Gym t-shirt. For example, uh, the new edition of Pro Wrestling Illustrated. A huge picture of Hulk Hogan. And what's he wearing? A Gold's Gym tank top. Now tell me what kid wouldn't want a Gold's Gym tank top after seeing Hulk Hogan wear it. He's one of the mascots here at Gold's Gym. Are you a little disappointed he won't be there? Yeah, I am, because I really thought Mike could win it. I really did. And it's not because he's, you know, he's one of the homeboys. Hey, they asked me, why didn't you go on Olympia this year? I said, I had to work legs today. I can't miss a leg day. They said, I have weak legs. I can't miss a leg day. What the hell? <laughs> come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's it. That's it. Come on. Everything you got. Everything you got. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Mike, it's easy to see who wears the pants in your family, so to speak. What got you to design these big-legged drawers? Well, I was wearing some other sweatpants that were very uncomfortable. The crotch was a little bit high. They fit very tight on guys with big thighs. The thighs were very tight and uncomfortable. So I wanted to design some uh, clothing wear that was very comfortable and uh, looked uh, different, crazy, wild, creative, part of my Christian show the world. Uh, part Instead of, of me asking you to drop your pants, Mike, how about just showing me some? <laughs> well, here's some of my uh, wild and crazy, crazy creative colors. These are called the block. They're neon colors and very wild. Uh, they show the maps, and it's got like maps of the world. Indian tan here. I'm very happy. I'm very content now. Even though I am a bit depressed that I'm not going into conscious. The conscious is two days away, and I'm starting to get a little depressed. 
But I think if my company's doing well, my family life is, is doing very well, and that's the important thing right now. Like I said, I have all my life to win, Mr. Olympia, and I think I have what it takes to win the title. I'm very confident. I'm very secure, and I think security is the foundation before you can just go out and just go into a competition. You know, you have to have your mind and yeah, mentally be prepared for it. So that's what I'm working on now, and uh, next year I plan on taking that title. I really believe I can take it. Whoever wins that title, Samir, Lee Haney, Bob Paris, uh, you know, Sean Ray or whoever. But some people believe you could have done it this year, and the reason you dropped out is after you saw Samir Banut's condition. Oh, wow, I've never heard that. Uh, Samir is looking very well, but he never worried me at all. Samir is 5'8", I'm 6'1". I think that answers the question.